Welcome back again, brothers and sisters, to our program today, The Creator's Masterpiece, where we see the instruction laid by God himself that created the human body and how man is supposed to live. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you so much for your grace. We pray for greater di directions on how we need to live and that we may live and have the faith of the patriarchs and the faith imparted from you above. A channel of communication which is right in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we have yet another important topic to look at. The Lord himself, the creator of man, gives specific instructions. And now, he sends his children. He allows this to pass and come through. Captivity. That they might face the problem for them to understand and to see the goodness of where they are going. And decide to take them out of slavery. He takes Joseph into Egypt to make him understand the hidden way. And they come in through Joseph and they learn the good things of the Lord, how God made Egypt to succeed because of Joseph that took in the right bread, which is the word of the Lord in Egypt that they might learn and know. Now, Joseph lived in Egypt. He married an Egyptian woman. His children were born in Egypt. But one thing, his father, Israel, taught him, never did he let go. Like human beings, never are we to let go on that which God has said from the beginning. The right instructions, the bad instructions that we find in the Bible, they should give us a lesson that we should not go through a hard life, but we should fall upon God and trust him no matter what comes through to, to happen unto us. So in Genesis chapter 50, verses 24, we see a situation when now Joseph is also odd, it says, And Joseph said unto his brothers, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he saw to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. He tells them, My life is going down. Now, I'm dying. But he tells them, The Lord will visit you. So this, this man, Joseph, had a vision. He knew. He believed in what God has spoken to them that Egypt, because it was a powerful nation, no matter how nice it may be, how good it may look, that was not the entire land. It wasn't theirs. But he believed in God that brought his father up and he lived on the instruction that God gave through his father that Joseph may leave it also. So he tells them, do not be comfortable. God will visit you to take you out of this land because this is not our land. Joseph was a king who was given a ring and lived in a chariot of a pharaoh. No one can be given such, such a position in a foreign land when you're a foreigner. But Joseph, because of, of God's intervention, who lived upon the word of God and he went to take the word of God, and Egypt at that particular time recognized God. Ladies and gentlemen, Egypt represents the world. And we are going out of Egypt, going to spiritual Canaan, which is heaven. And he knew and he told them in verses 24 that I'm dying. God will visit you to the promised land he will take you. Then he tells them in 25, And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and they shall carry up my bones from hence. That is the point I would love us to understand. This human being created by God who understands his beginning, his foundation from the Lord, the creator himself. He tells them, God will visit you, and he would want you to take my bones. Do not leave my bones in this land because this is a foreign land. Never should you leave your heart in a foreign land because God will take you out and take you to the promised land. So he knew, though he's dying, time will come when God shall send a prophet and visit them. This was time before even Moses came. And now he's dead. Captivity for the Israel starts, for the Israelites. That's what it meant. Because they cannot recognize Joseph anymore. And they embalmed his body and they covered him and they carried him. And this information we are given in the word of God when you go to Hebrews chapter 11, the book of faith, this is chapter 11, this is 22. It further says, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments according his bonds. When they are about to depart, he made mention of his bonds and gave commandments according to how he want his bones to be taken out of that land because that was not his land. It tells us, no matter how much you are rich, how much wealth you have, 
if you hold on to the worldly pleasure, this is not your home. But he that created you has prepared a special place for you and me. All these things will perish. Everything that you have, all the TVs that we have, all the computers, all the monies, all the luxurious things that we treasure most. Fire is coming one day to burn them when the Creator Himself comes. Don't be comfortable, but if you have to die today, let your heart be sealed that the Creator comes and takes it to the promised land. There is no time, brothers and sisters, and God has spoken. His word is true, and His word does not change. And when He has spoken, expect it to come true. Moses was born. He came denied the Egyptian life which was so good and overwhelming prepared through Joseph through the instruction of God but he never lived up to it Moses picked up the bones of Joseph and they left for the promised land the creator's masterpiece God expects us to move according to how the Lord would want us to move. Even if you are old, you are leaving your children, leave their hearts sealed in the Lord. The greatest wealth you can never give to your children is not worldly pleasures. Bring them upon the word of God. Bring them upon the right direction, the right instruction. Follow him and move strictly upon that which he has provided. When you live and do things rightly, I'm telling you, the Lord will see you through. The Lord will seal your family, even if you are gone or you are dead, when you depended on the worldly things, when you take them off and rely only upon the word of God. God will seal your family because they will know that you brought them unto the sight of God. The greatest riches you can ever give your children, it's not the TV games, it's not the computers, it's not the education of this world, but it's the truth and the word of God is truth. When you leave us and give us this instruction today, then we can carry on like Joseph did and gave instruction and reminded them, when the Lord visits you in this land, do not leave my bones, carry them with you. The, the bones themselves, when you look at it, even from the scientific aspect, the Lord himself, when he made the human body, which is the creator's masterpiece, you believe me that a bone, when it breaks, a doctor will just put it back in its position, then it heals itself through the vital force that God has put into it. Because it has living cells. God touches it for it to be mended. It has three cells that will fix a bone. A stale blast looks for the material to, 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 to build the damaged part of the bone. A stale clast will actually bulge up the material to mend the damaged part of the bone. A stale site will help to take in the blood that goes through and give vital force to a bone. It's telling us the importance of the life that God has put in a bone. They all work like God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to rebuild back the bone that has been destroyed. The Creator's masterpiece. Do you have faith? The Lord is calling. There is no time. Seal up your place. Give him your heart. Let him prepare you for the soon coming kingdom where there is no sickness, where there is no dying, but strength and ability laid in him. Then he will deliver us to the promised land. Brothers and sisters, let us know that all these buildings will crumble one day. The Lord will burn them to ash. No stone will remain on top of the other stone because it's coming. The Lord is the creator and you destroy to rebuke. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for your grace sufficient for man. Give us great instruction and love and mercies upon your will that never fails. Lead us in, way, in a way that is so great before thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.